That's me closing the door on the Black Sabbath discography. I'm not sure if my uh, my miming skills or my uh, my my acting skills are any good, but that was supposed to be to be me closing the door on uh, on Black Sabbath for uh, I think for this series. I do have one more that I'm going to talk about, but it's not a it's not a classic Black Sabbath album. Maybe you'll be surprised, maybe not. But uh, this is going to be the last classic Black Sabbath Black Sabbath album that I do. The other one is going to come. Maybe much later, and I think I will at the um, suggestion or request of Kirk Desmond. He 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 mentioned this maybe a month and a half ago um, that that he I, I won't say what it is because I want to keep it a secret because I want to build suspense so I can be a YouTube sensation. Um, but he 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 said something a month or a month and a half ago that made me that gave me an idea to do something something Black Sabbath related. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get to that, but there will be a, a special, very special edition of um, another one about me talking about Black Sabbath combined with something else. That's enough about that. So this is uh, Master of Reality, the last of the, what I consider, and I think what most people consider the, the classic uh, Black Sabbath albums. There were two more after this with Ozzy. Some people would include those in the classic Black Sabbath because it's Ozzy, but I, I think... Um, for me and for a lot of people, the classic era of Black Sabbath ended with Sabotage, which I did two months ago, but today I'm going to do Master of Reality. And I was doing these all out of order, partially because I kind of do them as I feel like it. I, I don't necessarily feel like talking about them in order, but I, I think for this one, especially just because I had a hard time finding this one. I got this one a few weeks ago. This was one along with Paranoid that I, I couldn't find on on, uh, on Amazon. I found, but they're always way too expensive. There's no way I was gonna pay um, what what they were at that time. So I ended up going to CD Universe, I think in, I think it was in July, middle of July, and I found Master of Reality and Paranoid for, for a very reasonable price, and I got them, and as it happens in Mexico with mail, they never arrived, and uh, so I canceled them, and I got Paranoid ended up later being much, much, much cheaper, like 40% cheaper on Amazon, which I got. Master of Reality, I got from eBay. This is my first eBay record purchase. Uh, I've been using eBay since like 1999, but this is the first time I bought a record from eBay. It came from a store in uh, in Arizona called uh, In In Records or In In The Groove or In Groove Records, something like that, in Tempe or more Mesa, something like that. So there's no no Amazon branding today, just uh, just just uh, the I guess the the price tag from the store. It's a physical store. You can go to the Inn or In Groove or In Records, whatever it's called. In uh, in the Phoenix area, you can go and you can buy a Black Sabbath album just like this. But I got it from eBay. Um, so there's there's how I got to to find Master of Reality. Now about this record in general. It's, uh, I've mentioned before, those, those first six, it's hard for me to pick a favorite, although I, I typically go with um, with Paranoid. I'm not sure where I would put Master of Reality. It could be as high as second. It could be, it's not sixth. I, I think of the first six Black Sabbath albums, the first record is, is my least favorite of the six, which is still better than everything they did after Ozzy left. Arguably, maybe not Heaven and Hell. Um, but, but uh, I, I could put Master of Reality maybe second, maybe, I used to kind of think it could be second, it could be third, fourth, fifth, somewhere on there. Um, it's kind of, a, it's, a, it's a short album. It's, I think it's only 35, maybe 36 minutes, I didn't check that, but it is quite short. And I never had this on record, this is my first time having it. I've had it on CD, of course, forever. Um, but my first time having it on record, and it is, on something kind of mysterious, you can see it is a gatefold. And this is strange, of the first six Black Sabbath albums that I got, they were all gatefolds except Sabotage. Now, I don't know if I got a, a funky version, if there was a different version of Sabotage that wasn't a gatefold, or maybe they only did gatefolds for the first five, which would have went up until uh, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. But anyway, this is the gatefold, but I don't know what is uh, within the gatefold. And also unique about this one, I don't think I've ever seen before any record that had the lyrics printed on the back, right? Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that unique? Is, is there another record that had the lyrics on the back? So I'm not sure what's inside. Um, 
but I, I really, really like this album, but it is a little bit, uh, it, it feels a little bit incomplete to me. Now that's because there are two instruments, there are only, there are eight tracks, which is fine. Two of them are short instrumental filler, I would say filler, that's um, uh, or, uh, Embryo and Orchid, which, you know, they're not even real songs like, um, you know, Fluff, that, that was like a full song, it was an instrumental, but it was, and it was beautiful and it was, Quiet and nice, but it was a full song. But I would say Embryo and uh, Orchid, they're more like introductions. They're only 30 seconds, 40 seconds each, I think. Introductions to the, the respective songs. Um, Embryo goes into Children of the Grave and Orchid goes into Lord of This World. Um, so, so realistically, there's only six songs on this record. One of them, Solitude, is... Um, it's not your typical Black Sabbath song, and I'll get to that when I do the track by track. But so there's really only five what you can consider real Black Sabbath songs. Sweet Leaf, After Forever, Children of the Grave, Lord of This World, and Into the Void. Um, and this album does contain, now the reason this, this album would go higher, I think, in my, in my Black Sabbath catalog rankings, is because this album does contain what could be my favorite Black Sabbath song ever. Um, it could be one, one, one of them on this along with War Pigs and uh, Wheels, Wheels of Confusion. I think those are maybe my, my, my top two and maybe this one on, on this album, which you'll find out momentarily, is my number one. But those are, those are probably my favorite top three Black Sabbath songs. So it does, and there's another that is, is also a very, very top one. So overall, this album is a little bit weird or incomplete. But it has, it has great songs on it, but two super high-ranking songs for me. Um, so that's it. And I love the sound of this album, too. Like all the great Black Sabbath albums, they all sounded incredible. So I'm going to uh, I'm gonna open it now. There's no hype sticker, so I don't need to, to go outside and fiddle around by, by taking a picture. All right. All right. Hello, uh, here it is, nice and uh, purple and blacky. There it is, and I will open it up, and I'm sure what's in the gatefold, I'm sure I've seen it before, I just don't recall. What is this, hmm. Ah, you know what, this doesn't look familiar. Ah, this, this is, I'm sure this is new to my eyes, or maybe I just don't remember. Uh, all right, and a few liner notes on here. It does have a little bit on the back along with the lyrics. Um, oh, interesting, they're all, all credited to, to Iomi, Osborne, Butler, and Ward, except Ember and Orca, which makes sense, but after Forever, those three are credited solely to Tony Iomi. I can understand Ember and Orca, but after Forever, that's, uh, does that mean he wrote the lyrics to it too? I guess, I thought it was Geezer that wrote all the lyrics. Um, Produced by uh, by Roger Bain, I, I think he produced the first three. Maybe did he produce Volume Four as well? I can't remember. But uh, anyway, there's there's the photo. It looks it's it's pretty similar to the uh, the gatefold of Paranoid. And the inside, what's inside? Hopefully something. Oh, very nice, beautiful packaging. This is uh, the same as whatever Paranoid and whatever the other ones were that had this uh, a lot of reading to do. I like it. It would take you much probably longer to read this than it would to listen to this 34, 35 minute album. And I have no problem with short albums, as I've said before. 32 minutes is fine, 31, 30. Rain and Blood is, is 28, 29 minutes. Uh, but it does feel, as I said, a little bit incomplete. Uh, so getting to this now, the first track, and it's, it's, let me check, I think it's black vinyl, right? For those who care, I think it's just regular black vinyl. Yes, it is. There it is. All right. Um, so getting to it now, it opens with some coughing, and then it goes, uh, and that is Sweet Leaf. Um, it's a classic Black Sabbath song. Uh, I think they stopped doing it years ago. I've seen Black Sabbath twice in their more recent years. I saw them in 2013 and 20. 17, whenever they did the, the final tour. And I, I think by that point they had dropped it. Maybe it's just 
I know, hard, hard for Ozzy to sing. Um, but it's, it's a classic, isn't it, Sweet Leaf? I love this song. A little bit tired of it from hearing it for the last 40 years. I don't know when the first time I heard it was, probably in the early 80s. But it's been a long time that I've, that I've uh, been a fan of Sweet Leaf. So I'm, I'm kind of over it, but I can't deny that Sweet Leaf is a great song. And you know what? Another thing about this album is, well, lyrically, Sweet Leaf obviously is, refers to, to weed. But lyrically, it doesn't really directly reference weed, aside from the fact it's called Sweet Leaf, right? And it's kind of, um, yeah, actually just looking at the, you know, knowing the lyrics of this, it's actually quite positive. You think of Black Sabbath as this evil satanic band. This album uh, has some very positive lyrics on it. And I'm sure if you're listening to this, maybe you know them. And I, I don't know if I can recall them now, maybe as I go through their tracks. But this is a very positive sounding, lyrically, a very positive record. Um, even though they do mention Satan in one song. Uh, including now the next song, starting with this uh, for positivity, After Forever. Uh, now, you know, it has the line, would you do you want to see the, would you like to see, or do you want to see the Pope? Do you want to see a Pope on the end of a rope? Do you think he's a fool? Would you like to see the Pope on the end of a rope? Do you think he's a fool? Um, is Christ just a name that you read in a book when you were in school? It's, it's obviously a religious song, but I think it's more like, you know, to me, it's kind of like they're saying, it doesn't matter what your friends think about you, if you're into religion, if you're into God. To me, After Forever is a pro-God song. And doesn't it, doesn't it make sense? Now, I know if you've listened to this album for so long, you, you know, you're accustomed to hearing Sweet Leaf first. I think it should have been reversed, no? After Forever first, Sweet Leaf second. To me, it just makes more sense. Um, but the part of uh, After Forever, dun, 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 that totally reminds me of, or later, there's a song by Cadavar called Comeback Life that has a part that when I heard that, I thought that sounds exactly like uh, After Forever. Um, and then, I'm almost finished already, then is Embryo, the 30, 35 second instrumental interlude between After Forever and Children of the Grave. Embryo is uh, classic. That's filler. That's what filler is. Instead of having six songs, they put these two little instrumentals and made it eight and made it one minute longer. Uh, Children of the Grave, what a, what a classic song. This is one I, I think that they've done through all their career, Children of the Grave. And again, another one that sounds on the surface and you know, the end, the Children of the Grave. It sounds very spooky and scary, but, but lyrically, um, you know, they'll fight the world until they've won and love comes flowing through. Um, can, can they win the fight for peace or will they disappear? It's very positive. This song, although it has a really dark, you know, musically, it's, it's very dark and heavy, but lyrically, it's, it's quite nice. It's, uh, it's a little bit gentle lyrically. Uh -huh. The next side is uh, Orchid, again, filler starting off. It's a less than a minute, I think, uh, instrumental, which leads into Lord of This World. Now, the, the last half of this album, or the, the, these last three songs, oh, I love the first half, but the, I think the last half is way, the second half is way better. Um, Lord of the World, dun, 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 dun. it has that, it has, <laughs> excuse me, kind of a bounce to it, a little bit of a swing. Um, I, I love Lord of the World, and Corrosion of Conformity did a great cover of that on, and uh, White Zombie did a cover of uh, Children of the Grave. I think they were both on those Black Sabbath Nativity and Black Tribute albums, or maybe one was on the first one because there were two versions, I can't remember, but um, those, those, both those, Children of the Grave and Lord of This World were both covered very well by White Zombie and uh, Rose of Conformity. Um, Lord of This World, evil, pos evil Possessor, Lord of This World, he's your possessor now. This is another one. Um, yeah, maybe this is a little bit darker. What will you, t what will you turn to me when it's your turn to die? When it's your turn to die or time to die? When it's your turn to die? Um, you're searching for your mind, don't know where to start, can't find the key that fit the lock on your heart, that fit the lock on your heart. You think you know, but you are never quite sure. Uh, your soul is ill, your soul is ill, and you will not find a cure. Yeah, da -na 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 -na. Uh, I think Lord of the World is a fantastic song. I, I love that. It's a little bit of a different style of Black Sabbath, that, that kind of swing and bounce, but I love it. Next is Solitude. This is I would say my, my second favorite song on this album. 
it would probably get compared to um, Planet Caravan on the previous album on Paranoid because they're both kind of quiet, mellow songs. For me, I'd put Solitude. That, that could be in my top five Black Sabbath songs ever. I love Solitude. I think it's amazing song. Very, very quiet. And also very mournful, very sad. No, it's, it's similar to lyrically, maybe similar to um, Changes, which was on the next album on volume four. I guess about it's, it's, it's uh, lamenting a love lost. Um, guess I will go home, sit down and moan. Much easier than I can see lyrics instead of trying to recall them on the spot. Crying and thinking is all that I do. Memories I have remind me of you. Um, oh, an interesting lyrically here in the second, uh, second verse. Oh, where can I go to? I always thought he was saying nowhere can I go. Nowhere can I go to. All right. Um, you just laughed when I begged you to stay. You, I've not stopped crying since you went away. Poor Ozzy, no? Or poor Geezer Butler, whoever. Um, I love Solitude. Amazing song. And then the last one is possibly my favorite Black Sabbath song ever, along with War Pigs and probably Wheels of Confusion, and that's Into the Void. And I know James Hetfield has said that Into the Void is his favorite Black Sabbath song. I think Eddie Van Halen has talked about how much he loves Into the Void. And, um, you know, that, 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 that riff. Uh, oh my God, no, nobody really talks about that one like they talk about, uh, I don't know, maybe Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath or something. And the middle part of Into the Void, um, the, you know, where it, uh, it stops for a second, which I think was taken later on the song Black Sabbath by Daglo Abortions, that, that pause, and then that kind of uh, double time, you know, the Freedom Freedom Fighters sent, out to, sent off to the sun. Sent out to the sun, freedom fighters sent out to the sun, and it, it speeds up and it's, it's kind of rumbling, and then it goes and it glides very gently and, and easily and slowly back into the that that amazing da 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 riff, and that that song just just does a, a great complete circle, similar to I talked about this with how many more times by Led Zeppelin, into the void is a fantastic top three for sure Black Sabbath song. So there it is, that, that's, that's short. Only, as I said, eight tracks, six real songs, but that's it. Yeah, so there you go. Black Sabbath. Um, and if you like Black Sabbath, as I mentioned at the beginning, there will be another, two more kind of Black Sabbath themed, one regular episode and one very special episode. Um, and there it is. So until then, here we go, Black Sabbath, Master of Reality. <laughs>